I recently received an email from a viewer that asked, how can I write as a new mom? That's a great question. Unfortunately, I'm not really qualified to answer that because, well, I'm not a new mom or an old mom. Now that said, I do know an amazing writer who happens to be a new mom herself, MK Williams, and I asked her that very question. Take it away, MK. Hi, Keith. Thanks for having me on the channel. Hey, everyone. I'm MK Williams from Author Your Ambition. So nice to virtually meet you. So I have a channel over on uh, my page that's all about self-publishing, making a career out of being an author. And now I'm posting a lot of videos about being a mompreneur because as Keith mentioned, I am a new mom. So as of November 2020, I have a beautiful baby girl in my life. Um, but I launched a book in January 2021 and I plan to launch three more books in 2021. So my life is getting a little hectic and complicated. So I'm here today to tell you how I'm able to write books, even though I have a newborn at home. Now, technically, she's no longer a newborn. She's past her first three months. She's an infant. But yeah, tell that to my schedule. <laughs> so when Keith asked me how I'm able to still write, I want to just jokingly say a whole lot of coffee. <laughs> um, but there is more to it than that. So I'm here today to share with you my best tips. Um, so number one is planning ahead. So I kind of had some advance notice that I was going to have a baby at least nine months worth. Um, and so I was able to plan ahead. Now for my book that I launched in January, um, how to write your first novel, I was able to plan ahead. So I had all the formatting done. I had the pre-order set. I had, um, the audiobook recorded. Um, I was editing the audiobook pretty much up until the day before I went into labor. I was kind of like, no, I just want to rest. You know, I need to get this done. My husband was like, what if you go into labor tonight? Like you're not gonna be able to finish this. And what do you know what happened? I went into labor that night. Um, so the audiobook, I had like two more chapters to go and I just wasn't able to get it launched at the same time as the rest of the book launch, but you know what? It was just fine. Um, so planning ahead is my first tip. And my second tip, which relates to that is let go of the idea of a perfect launch. Um, so my priorities right now have totally shifted. And yes, I want to have a picture perfect launch. I want to have everything set up just right. I want it to all just do the work for me so I can just be with my baby girl. But that's just not going to happen. Anybody out there who is a seasoned parent is going to be able to tell you, let go of the idea of perfect. It's not going to happen. And that's something I definitely had to learn the hard way this first time around. Um, you know, the day the book came out, I wanted to be checking my reviews. I wanted to be looking at my rankings. I wanted to be sending review reminders. I wanted to do all the things. And I couldn't do that because my baby girl needed me and she was having trouble sleeping. She wouldn't sleep without being held. So I couldn't hop on my computer to look at things. I had to hold her. And that was honestly more important at that time than getting the best possible ranking on release day. It just is what it is. I have this book. I can promote it for the rest of my life, for the rest of her life. It's totally fine. So letting go of this idea of perfect was also necessary. Now, I mentioned I have three other books I want to be getting out this year. So one of them is actually with my editors right now, which is going to be the sequel to my time travel saga, um, The Infinite Infinite. So this book I was able to work on while I was holding her. Um, so one of the great things about babies is they do sleep a lot. And when they sleep, I'm able to read. I am able to catch up on things. Um, I had a phase, and as a new parent, if you're watching this, you probably are also going to go through it if you haven't already, where she wouldn't nap unless she was being held. Um, so this whole idea of sleep when the baby sleeps is yeah, take it with a big grain of salt because I can't sleep when I'm holding her. But I could do a lot of other things for my business while I was holding her. So I was answering questions on YouTube. Um, I was responding to emails from clients. I was going back and forth. So the times that she would sleep and I wasn't having to hold her, uh, maybe my husband was holding her, maybe she was finally napping in her crib, um, I was actually able to work on my book. So it was getting everything else done. So when I had that time, I was able to focus on the book and then get it off to my editors, um, which is another tip. Hire out what you need done. This is not the time to bootstrap it and try and do it all yourself. You are already doing a lot as a new parent. Um, definitely take advantage of the experts that are out there, of the help that's being offered to you, not just around the house and for cooking and cleaning, like hire somebody to help you with your book. If you need it formatted, if you need the cover done, I used to offer formatting services. I love doing it. You know what? I don't think I'm going to love it anymore because it's going to take way too much of my free time. That's very much at a premium right now. 
Okay, my next tip is to definitely ske- like make your schedule very clear of when you want things done by. So I don't know if you've heard the phrase before, what gets measured gets managed. So for me, I'm working on two other books while this current book is with my editors. So I want to make sure I'm making pr- enough progress on them. So I'm setting a word count goal per week. Um, and then I'm backing into that to say, okay, well, every day I need to write just a couple hundred words then if I want to hit that count for each of these books. Okay, that seems doable. And I'm making sure I during her first nap of the day, which is usually her longest nap, that I'm getting that done. So this is a good way for me to make sure I'm on track um, to meet my goals. Now, as I said before, there is no such thing as perfect. If I'm a little off target, I'm a little off target. I'm I'm the kind of person who sets like really ambitious goals. And then if I miss, I'm like, okay, well, that was pretty ambitious. I still got way further than I would have otherwise. So definitely keep that in mind. Set goals around how much you want to write each day, how much, whether that's just timing. I want to write for 10 minutes a day, or I want to get X many words in a day. And also I'm giving you permission right now. You don't have to write every day. You have so much going on parenting a newborn. Um, you know, they're the priority. And that was really tough for me at first. I feel like I lost some of my identity as an author because I wasn't writing every day, but you know what? I was gaining this new identity as a mom and I was definitely being a mom to my daughter every day. So that was one thing I had to learn to deal with. This is a very short season of life where I'm really just a caregiver. I'm making sure she's fed. She's clean. She has what she needs to survive and grow and thrive to the point where she can feed herself later and do some other things later. So I'm trying to remind myself that yes, in this phase of life, I'm not writing every day. It just doesn't happen. If I'm going to be running my author business and edits need to happen and other launches need to get planned and things like that. Um, So I just know this is a very short season of life. And when I can write every day again, I will absolutely be doing that. So those are my best tips for you. Um, If you also have a newborn at home and you're trying to figure out how am I going to keep writing? How am I going to get my book out? I promise you it can be done. It's just really setting those priorities. So for me, yes, I could be spending my downtime just chilling, laid back, um, cat napping, Um, we're out of the phase now where I feel like I need to nap. She's actually sleeping through the night. Thank goodness. Um, so I don't need to nap as much during the day. Um, but I love my business and I want to keep it going and I want her to be able to see her mom as the successful entrepreneur. So that definitely inspires me to keep going. Um, now that's not to say that you don't deserve a break mama. Like if you need a rest, take a rest. But if you really want to get your books done, definitely make sure that that's your priority when you have those nap times. Um, set that aside, even if it's just one nap time a day. You know, the other two nap times, you know, get the laundry done, get the cooking done, get the cleaning done, get your resting done. But if you really want to get your um, book out there, make sure at least one of those nap times is dedicated to your book and your writing. Okay, so those are my tips. I hope you found them helpful. If you'd like to hear more of what's going on with my career as a mompreneur um, or any of my other tips, you can head over to my channel, Author Your Ambition. Um, and I'm MK Williams, and I will catch you later. Bye. Thanks, MK. And don't forget to check out MK's channel to get even more advice on how to juggle writing, publishing, and diapers. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to her channel. In fact, this video right here is one of my favorites of MK's where she gives 10 amazing tips for boosting the sales of your backlist of books. So go on, check out that video. If that doesn't interest you, then you might wanna check out this video right here that YouTube dares you to watch. Go on, check out one of those videos, and remember to write right.